Hello guys! So today we're going to talk about PHP MySQL database. Okay, so I assume that you already have the knowledge on MySQL database, like creating database, um, tables, and SQL queries. Okay, then the thing that we're going to focus on this part is about, of course, you details of MySQL, PDO, or the PHP data object, and prepared statement. Okay, so those are the things that we're going to talk about today. Okay, so let's start with what is MySQL, or sometimes they call it as MySQL. MySQL is a database system used on the web. MySQL is a database system that runs on a server. MySQL is ideal for both small and large applications. MySQL is very fast, reliable, and easy to use. MySQL uses standard SQL. MySQL compiles on the number on a number of platforms. MySQL is free to download and use. MySQL is developed, distributed, and supported by Oracle Corporation. And MySQL is named after co-founder Monty Wynia's daughter, Mai. Okay. Okay. Next is, what is PHP Data Object or PDO? The PHP Data Objects or PDO extension defines a lightweight, consistent interface for accessing databases in PHP. PDO provides a data access abstraction layer, which means that regardless of which database you're using, you use the same functions to issue queries and fetch data. Some of the benefits of using PDO are as follows. First, we have security, employs usable preferred statements. Second is usability, contains many helper functions to automate routine operations. Third is reusability, it is a unified API to access multitude of databases, okay? Okay, what is prepared statement? A prepared statement, also known as parameterized statement, is simply a SQL query template containing placeholder instead of the actual parameter values. This placeholder will be replaced by the actual values at the time of execution of the statement. PDO support both anonymous positional placeholder question mark, as well as the name placeholder. A name placeholder begin with a colon followed by an identifier. Okay? So we have here yung sample natin. So basically, this is the query. Then ito naman yung mga placeholder. So we use here yung name placeholder. Okay? So colon, then yung pangalan or yung identifier. Okay? So, yung identifier, it doesn't mean na dapat magkatulad sila na field name. Okay? So, you can type here X, Y, Z. It's up to you lang. Okay? As long as once we try to bound a parameter to the placeholder, dapat magkatulad sila. Okay? So, later on, I'm going to show you kung paano ba natin gagawin yan. Okay, guys? Okay. So, advantages of using prepared statements. Prepared statement reduce parsing time as the preparation of on the query is done only once, although the statement is executed multiple times. Bound parameters minimize bandwidth to the server as you need send only the parameters each time and not the whole query. Then prepared statements are very useful against SQL injections because parameter values which are transmitted later using a different protocol need not be correctly escaped. If the original statement template is not derived from external input, SQL injection 
cannot occur. Okay? So, ano ba itong sinasabing SQL injection? So, what is SQL injection? SQL injection is an attack wherein an attacker can inject or execute malicious SQL code via the input data from the browser to the application server, such as web form input. It can use it or it can be used to expose sensitive information like users' contact numbers, email addresses, credit card information, and so on. An attacker can even use it to bypass authentication process and get access to the entire database. Okay? So, mas painam gamitin natin yung prepared statement to prevent or avoid any SQL injections. Okay, guys? Okay, so before we start coding, of course, we need to set up the database and tables. Okay? Since I am using SAMP, I need to start both Apache and MySQL. Okay? Then, once it is done, I need to go to my browser and type this one. Localhost PHP may admin. So, it will be redirected to this page. Then now, I'm going to create my database. So, we just need to click new. Then once we click new, this will show up. And we need to set up our database name. So, currently, we use test DB. Then create. After that, it will be redirected to this page and it allows us to set up our first table. So in this part, we set our table to have a value of users. Then click go. Then here, we're going to set up our fields. So we have your ID. First name, last name, email, and status. So I set the type of integer. Then for our, the other is worker. Then having a length of 10, 100, 100, 125. Then on the part of the default column, on the status field, I also set a default value of active. Para every time we insert some new data or record, um, automatic yung status field magkakaroon ng active na status. Okay? Then, we set also yung ID natin as primary key. Then, as auto increment. Okay? So, once it is done, this will be the output of our table. The structure of our table. Okay? Okay. Okay, so how to connect to MySQL database? So we have here yung sample code natin in which I placed it in a function and name it as get database connection. Okay, so I declare some variable here on um, local host for the host. Then if it is gone, actually if it is already um, for production, um, mostly they use yung IP address ng server. But since we are working locally, then we can set local host, okay? Then the database name, of course, yung test DB. Then the user is root. Then yung password of the database is um, empty by default, okay? But if you're already in a production server, um, there will be a password created. So kindly ask your system administrator for that. Then we have here yung data source name or the DSN. So, we have here yung driver, which is the MySQL, colon, um, db name equals the database that we have, semicolon, then host equals to the local host or the host that we have, okay? Then, we have this try catch. Then, we try here, we try the connection using the PDO function and pass the DSN, user and password. Once this is successful, it will return the connection to the caller. Okay, then dito naman, if ever um, sabihin natin wrong spelling yung database name or hindi na-access yung database name 
or mali yung password o di kaya yung user, then it will be catch here and display some error. Okay? So that's how we set up yung database connection natin. Okay? Okay. So since we're already done with our database connection, now let's try to know how to insert data. So we have here yung sample code natin. So I created a function which have an arguments of first name, last name, and email. Okay? So first thing nangyari dito is we try to get the database connection. Okay? Then pass it to a variable con. Then since it returns an object, so we do this. So arrow, then prepare. So this is where we set up yung um, SQL template or yung query template rather. So insert into users, which is yung table name ko dito. Um, then yung mga field names, values. If, then dito naman yung mga placeholder for our value. So, colon, um, first name, colon, last name, and colon, email. Okay? So, ngayon, paano natin papasahan ng actual value to? So, we're going to do it here sa bind param. So, um, we pass yung prepared template natin sa isang variable na statement. Then, since it is also an object, we use yung, yung arrow. Then, bind param na function. Then, the first parameter will be the placeholder. Okay? Then, the second will be the actual value na. Okay? Same thing with the last name and email. Okay? So, once this execute statement here um, will be called, then the actual value will be passed to the placeholder and execute the query. Okay? So, after that, once it's successful or even not, it will return a response. Okay, so we're going to check the response. If it is true, then here, we're going to return the last inserted ID. Basically, yung primary key. Babalik niya for, to the caller. Now, if ever maging false yung response or hindi successful yung process ng SQL statement natin, then it will return false. And we're going to return false as well to the caller. Now, but ganito yung ginagawa natin. Why we have this return false? Para at least, um, we can tell the user na sab pwede natin sabihin na um, the data was not successfully saved. Mga ganon. Or, error occurred. Please contact system administrator. Okay? So, we can control the output if ever hindi maging successful yung process ng ating pag-insert ng data. Okay, guys? Ngayon, let's try to call that um, function. Kagaya nito. So, this is just how we call yung function, insert data. Then, papasahan ko ng first name, which is Raymond. Last name is Dilo. Then, yung email address. Then, another record that I want to submit or to pass, Richard, Dilo, then yung email niya. Then, another naman na record is Carolyn, um, Dilo, at saka yung email. Now, once you check your database, ito na yung makikita natin. Okay? The newly added na mga records. Okay? So, that's how we try to insert data in our database using the prepared statement. Okay, guys? Okay, now, since we're already done with inserting data, now let's try to know how to update data. Okay, so we have here yung sample code. Halos the same yung code kanina. Halos lang, ha? Um, first, we have yung database connection. Then, we prepare the statement. And, meron tayo dito ng mga placeholder. So, update user, set first name, yung placeholder. Last name equals the placeholder of last name. Email equals the placeholder of email. Then, we use the where clause. ID equals the ID of the placeholder. Okay? Then, we try to bind param yung mga actual value to the placeholder. Then, execute. Once successful, we return true. Then, once 
um, hindi naman successful, then we return false. Okay? Ngayon, let's try to call the um, the function something like this. So, in this part, we try to edit yung records na merong ID na 3, which is yung Caroline actually. So, i-update natin siya from be having a Caroline na pangalan to Carol. Dailo at saka carol at gmail.com. Okay? So, once it is executed, then this will be the output ta. So, instead of Caroline na dito, naging Carol na lang. Okay? So, successful yung pagkaka-update natin. Okay, guys? So, that's how we update um, yung mga record ng database using yung prepared statement. Okay, guys? Okay. So, now we are already done with inserting. We also done with updating. Now, let's try to know how to delete data. So, ito naman yung sample code natin. We get the connection. So, the argument that we are requiring lang is yung ID. Okay, so we have here yung prepared statement natin. Then, we try to bind the actual value to our placeholder dito. Then, execute. So, once it is successful, we return true. Once hindi, we return false. Okay, to call the function, we just do this. Delete data, which is the function name, then pass an argument of ID. Kung ano man yung ID na gusto mong i-delete. Okay? But of course, guys, um, in the actual um, process na talaga, if you're already making a web application, it is not recommended to delete the actual value or the actual record. Bakit ka mo? Maybe that record is related to the other record. So, it might affect yung sinasabi nating data integrity. So, anong gagawin natin if we intend to delete? Kung hindi naman pala pwede natin gamitin yung delete na ganito. Okay? So, we can um, use or implement na lang yung sinasabi nating self delete. Okay? So, yung tanong ngayon, paano ba ginagawa yung self delete? Okay, so that's the next thing na sasagutin natin. How to self-delete data. All we need to do is to update. Okay? So, um, we have this code. Um, connection for our database. Then, yung prepared statement. So, instead of deleting, we use update. Okay? Update, user, set status, yung status placeholder, where id equals to the id so that's the reason why meron tayong status field okay so from having an active status it change lang natin to deleted okay then here we're trying to bind the param for the actual value then execute the statement then once it is successful then return true otherwise return false Na kung tatawagin natin, of course, soft, de soft delete data, then papasa natin yung um, ID. So, you can name it anything you want. Um, hindi naman required na i-follow nyo yung name na ginagawa ko. So, it's up to you kung what kind of naming convention yung gusto nyo. So, nasa sa inyo na yun. Okay? So, once we check yung database, yung may kita natin ganito. Um, meron pa rin tayong tatlong record but checking the status here um, the first two record have uh, an active status while yung isa naman the third one has an deleted status okay so if you want to display yung mga active then you might use where clause for that okay para hindi ma-display yung deleted na record. Okay, guys? Okay, so that's how we um, set up or do the self-delete of data. Okay? Okay, so we are now done with the inserting part, updating part, and also for the deleting or the self-delete part. Okay? 
So now let's try to know how to retrieve a record. In retrieving record from the database, we use two functions. First, we have yung fetch, and the other one is fetch all. We use fetch if we intend to retrieve single record. If the process was unsuccessful, then it will return false. Now, we use fetch all if we intend to retrieve multiple records. An empty array is returned if there are zero results to fetch or false on failure. Both functions have the default fetch style of PDL fetch both. Common fetch styles. First, we have the PDO fetch both, which is the default. Returns an array index by both column or field name and zero index column number as returned in your result set. Okay, so if we try to print R yung result, ito yung may kita natin. Okay, so yung parang index string name, then yung numeric or zero index na mga um, index. Okay? Then the second is yung PDO fetch hassle. Returns an array index by column or field name as returned in your result set. So ito naman yung may kita natin if we're going to use the fetch hassle wherein yung mga field name yung naka um, may kita natin dito as the index string and it use array okay para siyang associative array then the third one is pdo fetch object returns an anonymous object with property names that corresponds to the column or field names returned in your result set so ito naman halos magkatulad sila ng asok but of course uh, the return value is an object. So, kung sa ASOC, it is an array, you can access it through square bracket, while dito, you can access the field name through arrow, yung dash greater than, that is the arrow, okay? So, in this part of our um, discussion today, we're just going to use fetch ASOC, okay? Okay. okay, now let's try to know how to retrieve single record. Okay, so we have here yung codes natin. So, of course, um, we need to get the database connection. Then, set up yung prepared statement natin. Then, bind the actual value to the placeholder. Then, execute the statement. Now, we call the fetch function and pass a fetch type of fetch asoc okay so the return value here if it is successful is a associative array okay then return the result to the color of the function get data okay guys okay next is retrieve multiple records so ito naman yung code natin we have yung database connection our prepared statement then execute the statement then here we try to call the fetch all function and pass an argument of fetch type which is you a fetch style i mean which is you fetch as all now once um it has a successful process and mayroong record yung database natin yung error return niya is a multi-dimensional array Okay, guys? Then, after that, i-return natin yung result to the caller. Okay? Okay. So, quick activity muna tayo, guys. So, create a simple PHP program that would ask the user to enter some details like first name, last name, and email. Once the form is submitted, the data should be stored in the database then retrieve all the records and display it in a table yung html table 
So we have here yung sample form natin. We have here yung add user having an input text of first name, last name, and email. Then we have the save button. Then at the bottom, nandito naman yung list of users. Okay? So once we try to fill it up and submit the record, then this will be the output for the list of users. Okay? Okay, so ngayon guys, um, before we start our activity, so just like other activity that we're going, we're conducting, I want you to pause the video lang muna, then work on our activity. So once you're already done, then just play it back, then i-share ko naman sa inyo kung paano ko gagawin yung activity natin. Okay? So, make a pause. Okay guys, so now let's try to share to you naman kung paano ko gawin yung activity natin. So of course, first is I need to start the Apache and yung MySQL since we are going to use yung database. Okay, so once it is already to have the fourth, then I can close this one. And I want to go to, first, I need to set up yung database natin. So I need to go to localhost. PHP may admin. Okay. So, dito, click lang natin ng new. Then, lagay natin test DB. So, whatever database you want. Okay. Then, click. Then, we need to set up yung users. So, 5 field yung kailangan ko. Okay. Then, first yung ID. Second is yung first, first name, okay? Second is yung last name, then the is email, then dito naman yung status, okay? Then here, of course, integer lang, varkar sa first name, varkar din sa last name, email so also varkar, dito naman varkar as well. Then, yung land, dito, 10, 100, 100, 100, then just 25. Okay. Then, dito sa status, maglalagay ako ng as defined. Lagyan ko ng active. Para every time I insert some new data, um, the status field will be um, malalagyan agad ng value na active. Okay, then sa ID na part, I need to set the index as primary key. Okay, I'll go. Then, auto increment. Okay, so once it is okay na, then we can click save. Yan, so ito na yung, um, yung table natin, the structure of our table. Okay, now since nakaset up na yung ang database natin, we can now start in the part of our coding. Okay? So, um, meron na akong dito mga sample code for the HTML part, pero hindi ko pa tinapos yung mga forms. Then, yung mga functions, ginawa ko na lang para yung gagawin ko na lang is to call them up. Um, magkatulad lang naman nito yung nasa presentation ko kanina. Okay? So, yung function lang ginamit ko is yung connection insert data tsaka yung get all data okay okay so um that function of course naka um require ones na dito sa index file ko so let's try to access that one so localhost then new project Okay, so wala siya nakikita kasi wala tayong content na inilagay. So, lagyan natin yung first, actually yung add user. Okay, so let's just try that one. Okay, yun. Okay, the next thing is we need to set up the form. Okay, you need the form. Then, yung form, yung action niya, um, 
Sabihin natin within the file ko lang siya ipaprocess. Then, yung method is, of course, yung post. Then, I'm going to use paragraph. Then, first is yung first name. BR. Then, input. Text. Then, yung sabihin natin F name. Okay lang yan. Kasi okay lang magkaiba yung name ng input sa field name. Kasi, um, for the input naman to. Iba naman yung sa database field name. Then, sabihin natin L name. Okay. Then, for the email naman. Email tapos email. Okay, then we have yung input button. Input type, submit. Then, sabihin natin save yung name niya. Tsaka yung value. Okay. So, let's try to check this one. Refresh. Yan. Okay, so, sa bottom, naglagay tayo ng list of users. So, maglagay lang ako ng HR. Para at least may separator tayo. Then, list of users. Okay. Okay. Hmm, masyadong dikit. So, maglagay lang ako ng BR. Refresh. Yan. Okay. Now is... Um, gagawin naman natin is let's try to submit the form or trust natin once the form is submitted. So, ilagay ko na lang sa baba. Usually, yung iba sa taas nila nilalagay. Eh, sa taas na rin. Hmm. Okay. At tama, sa taas natin nilalagay kasi gagamit tayo ng redirection. So, hindi na work yung redirection within the HTML part. It should be, the one of the requirement, it should be before ma-display or ma-load yung mga HTML documents. Okay? So, dito natin ilalagay. If asset yung save button, then the form is already submitted. Then, yung gagawin natin, I would like to retrieve yung mga data natin sa form. We have first yung input. I mean yung first name. Then, we have yung last name. Third one, we have yung email. Okay. Then, the next thing na gagawin natin is to call yung insert data. Okay. And, ganun. Then, would like to call the header location para ma-refresh yung page. At if we intend to display yung um, records na dito, ma-update agad siya. Okay, so location index.php since yun naman yung pupuntan ko. Okay? Okay, so let's try this one. So maglagay ako ng Raymond last name dialog email sabihin natin at yara.com and save. Yan. So, so far walang error na nakita. Then let's try to check the database. So, let's me try to zoom this out. Then, let's try to browse. Yun. Nandito na yung record natin. Okay? Let's add more. Chard. Um, dialog. Come. Save. Okay. Refresh. Okay, nandito na. Isa pa. Harlan Dilo Okay. Then save. 
refresh. Okay. So basically, nasisave na natin yung mga data natin. Okay. Okay. So note lang guys, ha, pagdating sa mga form, you need to provide a form validation. Okay. Um, we're not doing it here. It is because we're not focusing on that part. But if you're going to make or develop a web application in the near, in the near future, then you need to have yung mga form validation natin. Okay? Okay, now let's try to display yung mga result coming from the database. Okay, so the first na gagawin ko ngayon muna is to set up yung table. So there are three columns. We have the first name, last name, and yung email. So gawa muna ako ng table, HTML table. Then for the header, T head, table header, we have yung TR, then TH for the um, last name. I mean first name ang muna. First name. Okay, then another is yung last name. Then, dito naman yung email. Okay? Then, we put for the t-body. Then, tr. Then, dito yung table data. So, sabi natin Raymond. Sample lang muna. Then, dialog. Then, yung mod at yaw.com. Okay. Tingnan natin. Okay, so let's put some border. So let's make a style here. Style. Then access the border. The table rather. TH, TD. Then border. One pixels. Solid. Black. Okay. Then I want to place some padding, 5 pixels, then left, right. Okay. Then refresh. Okay. Next is we need to specify the styles of border collapse. Border collapse. Collapse. Para maging single line lang yung border. Yan. Okay. So this is the default data pa lang. Okay. So now we're going to retrieve the data coming from the data. Okay. Um, kukuha ko dito ng function. Sana yan? Yung get all data. Then, gagawin ko siya dito. So, get all data. Then, ipasa natin sa result variables or result na lang. Then, check muna natin. If the result, may laman ba siya, pwede natin i-check yung ganun lang. Then, kung wala siyang laman, then we would like to display some result here. I'm just stating that no result found. Okay. Now, itong database table, ilalagay natin siya sa dito. First, we need to close and open the PHP part. Then, dyan natin ilalagay. Okay? Now, um, magkakaroon tayo ng looping statement. So, we're going to use the for each, since yung result niya is a multi-dimensional array. Check natin. Oh, fetch, oh, fetch object to. Ah. It should be fetch as of. Yan. Then, fetch all. Kamali ako dito. Should be fetch all and fetch as of. Okay. Now, it is already a multi-dimensional array na mara-return as array then we passed here 
Nandito ay eh, echo natin yung mga TR. Okay. Okay, so let's try to end then this one. Okay. So ngayon, papalitan natin yung mga value ng ah, dito. Having the value coming from the database. Okay. So, tingnan natin yung database natin, yung mga field name, para sure tayo, kasi yun ang dapat nakalagay dito. First name, then last name, then yung email. Okay. Okay, let's try to check. If it good, if it successful yung process natin, yun. So, ngayon, gagawin natin, let's try to delete all the data in our database. Okay, and delete. Yes. Okay, so, zero na yung data natin, wala nang laman. Now, let's try to refresh. So, ito yung magdi-display. Since walang laman yung database natin. Okay, ngayon, let's try to have some data. Okay, and save. Yun. Sabihin natin. Okay, save. Okay, works. Isa naman. yung spelling ni mama then tayo then yung email and save yun ok so our form works fine it works well um, yung mga queries natin so far wala na bang naging error ok so I think that's it so I hope you learned something new today guys regarding our topic today so basically we had learned about the MySQL, then um, the connection using, or uh, making connection to the database using the PDO or the PHP data object, and making some safer queries using prepared statement. Okay, so those are the things that we had learned in this particular part of our series. Okay, guys, so I think that's it. Just like I always say, just keep practicing and never stop learning. Thank you for watching guys and goodbye for now.